Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. Now, this morning or this afternoon, shall I say, we were going to talk about um, Damon Crawford's suggestion of raising income tax uh, to support education. You know, we're having or going through an education crisis in Jamaica. And one of the reasons for which we are going through that crisis is that we don't have enough money, um, or that is what the politicians are intimating, that we do not have enough money to finance education. And so what we find, we have a lot of problems, particularly economic problems concerning our teachers' remuneration package, and the fact that many of them are leaving uh, Jamaica to go to other countries uh, in which they think or they have stated that they you know are paid better right they are better remunerated and appreciated for the work that they do there was a story i must say in the in both newspapers uh recently i can't remember the date it could be last week friday they're about or could be sunday in which um the papers were reporting that our teachers in england specifically were underpaid that they were not paid to their British counterparts. So I mean, they were not paid equally the salaries that they were receiving. So for example, if their British salary, if the British teacher was receiving or is receiving 54,000 pounds sterling, the Jamaican teacher with the same qualification uh, will be receiving or might be receiving 37,000 pounds. I understand that when they go to England, they are listed or titled unqualified. So don't, I don't understand how they can be unqualified, but it's their system. So they are placed there as unqualified or as being unqualified teachers until a year or so. The fact of the matter, however, is that sometimes in the process, the process takes a long time, sometimes three to four years or more, and teachers you know, continue to receive paltry salaries in England, right, where they standard of living has is very high. So teachers are sometimes not coping very well with the remuneration package in England, right? That is what was reported. Now, we don't know the all the specifics surrounding that, but that is something interesting. But teachers are leaving um, nonetheless, right? I think they say while in England that while the housing is very high, but food prices are not as high and they compensate for that, right? I don't understand how, you know, the prices of food is relatively low in England when England is not, you know, doesn't produce anything, right? Is an importer of almost everything. Anyway, but Crawford, let's get to the crux of the matter. Crawford proposes increase in GCT to fund education sector. And this is taken from the nationwide website and it says here opposition spokesman on, on education centers Damon Crawford is proposing that the government increase general consumption tax as GCT by one percentage point and use the revenue to provide additional funds to the education sector. Senator Crawford was speaking on the weekend at the Jamaica Association of Principals of Secondary Schools, JAPPS, conference in Trelawney. Now, this was done, I must say that this was from June. The government has proposed or pursued a policy of no new taxes for the last eight consecutive budget cycles. That move has been considered a significant milestone. One of the things that Jamaicans have to understand, though, inflation and the cost of living is also a form of tax. So while the government might have, you know, moved away from taxes or reduced taxes or, you know, aborted the paying of taxes for a while, suspended, I should say, um, it doesn't mean, therefore, that you have not experienced taxes in other forms. And that's why Jamaicans have to think. Right, you've got to think. So when you go to the supermarkets and the grocery prices are constantly on a rise, it's a form of tax. It's a form of tax. So you have to look carefully at how the country is governed, and don't you know you can't just listen to what the politicians say. And there are things that they will say, and at face value, it seems so. But you have to look carefully at the other factors, how they will probably transfer it to other areas and have you suffer. Now, I must say that Damon Crawford, 
you know, understands that the teachers are suffering and he wants to, you know, ensure because he's a teacher himself, I understand, right? A math teacher. So he understands the fact that our teachers are poorly paid and they are not able to survive after their take home salaries, right? Particularly after they've paid their rents and some of them, you know, have their car loans and all the things that they all the bills that they have to pay. So he's suggesting here that, you know, government should do something to help teachers to get housing and all the things that they could help them to achieve, right? So to minimize on their bills so that they can survive on the um, paltry salaries that they receive from the government. However, while it might be something that is, you know, indicative of the fact that, you know, the Senator, Senator Damon Crawford is thinking and that I, you know, applaud his good motive in terms of wanting to solve the problem of teacher shortages and the fact that our teachers are migrating, immigrating yearly to other countries, which the ministry, the current ministry is downplaying. You know, I find that Favor Williams is downplaying the fact that teachers are actually migrating en masse to foreign countries. She doesn't seem to want to solve the problem. Everything in Jamaica has to be deflected and it's not as bad as we think and the government is doing well and, you know, the economic fundamentals are excellent. Right? Those are the talking points of the incumbent government under the Jamaica Labour Party's leadership. Right, I understand that you have to speak your talking point, but I'm not here to speak talking points of any politicians. I don't defend politicians, I defend policies, and I also defend the governance, good governance. That is what I defend, not party politics. I'm neither PNP nor GLP, right? I'm apolitical, but someone who understands the political process and how the political machinery works in Jamaica. And for that reason, I will continue to register my, um, you know, my analysis of anything that I see. Now, on that point, in terms of raising GCT, I would say no to Damon Crawford. The Jamaican people have borne a lot of austerity. We have suffered a lot of austerity. We can't tolerate um, any more austerity. I think that what needs to be done, if we can eradicate as much as possible, if we can reduce the corruption and allegations of corruption, acts of corruption by say a half, I think that they would have enough money to fund education, but not only education, but also healthcare. But there's just too much corruption in Jamaica. Another factor is crime and violence. We have been seeing, research have been saying for decades now, that crime in Jamaica costs the Jamaica, it's, I think it costs the Jamaica over 4% or of its GDP, right? 4% of its GDP is lost to criminal elements. And we know if the truth is told, we know that the criminal elements are coming from way up there, right? Among the economic elites from the ruling class, and it spills over into the political class, we know that the people in the ghetto areas and the ones who are actually the ones who are carrying out their criminal activities are the ones who we normally see the face of this large criminal enterprise. However, they are not the intellectual, um, you know, authorities. They are not the ones who have, you know, who operate the system, who manage the criminal industry or enterprise that we have in Jamaica. We know that it's coming from the upper echelons of society in cohorts or in cahoots, I should say, the, in cahoots with their global partners, right? We know that that is what happens. We know that it is not just these people who are just, you know, creating mayhem. So that might be the case, but this criminal element in Jamaica is too well organized. And that's why we call it organized crime. Because organized crime has always come from the top. Make no bones about it. It's a top-down operation. And what you're seeing in the media often is not what is the real story. So if we could reduce crime, and if we could, say, um, reduce it significantly, in which we have, let us say, 2% of that GDP that we have lost, and we can now plow it into the education sector, 
right, or and also into the healthcare sector, then that will be good, right? But we cannot at this point in time impose any more austerity on the Jamaican people because the Jamaican people have suffered for, you know, for too long and they have had to suffer at the expense of politicians living well. So I don't think that that is what should be done. You know, there was an article written some time ago again on Zara Burton's uh, substack, you know, in her substack, uh, 18 Degrees North Investigation. And she was writing here a story that she published on September 11th, 2024. No, no, that was not the article. It's another one. This was published on, let me see the date here, on August 11th, 2024. And the title of the article is, Did Jamaica's Finance Minister, Dr. Nigel Clark, use a tax-exempt charity for political purposes? Can he? Right? Let me see if I could share that article with you. This is the level of corruption that we have in Jamaica. And these corruption charges are never resolved. Right, they just nine day wonders at the, the prime minister's situation, and then it continues. Life continues, and they know that because they know that the Jamaican people do not care about what happens in the political realm. Right, they are just going by and they are defending their party colors and their party leaders. So that's all they do. Now, last month, Jamaica's finance minister, Doctor Nigel Clark, won praise for the country's. No, that is not what we was. I think was it here. Um, I think that I might have the wrong article up here too. Um, that was not it where I was trying to. Let me see if I could find it. Wow. Yeah, I think I might have the wrong article. Let me see if I could go back here and see where I found that article. Right. This is what I wanted to, to find, all right? So we have here, did Jamaica's finance, Mr. Dr. Nigel Clark, use a tax-exempt charity for political purposes, can he? Oh, yes, it was here. So we have last month, Jamaica's finance minister, so I was right, Dr. Nigel Clark won praise for the country's removal from the international gray list of the Global Watchdog Financial Action Task Force. For the past four years, he'd been the ministerial point person on enhancing the country's counterterrorism financing and anti-money laundering regime, including getting parliament to pass legislation to strengthen monitoring of the nation's nonprofit sector. But an 18 degrees North probe has found that Dr. Clark's own tax-exempt charity deserves scrutiny. Now listen to what he's alleging here. His growth and Opportunity Trust Limited, set up to serve his Northwest St. Andrew constituency by providing relief of poverty. They always have these charity, these four charity organizations, you know, because not solving any poverty, and to promote the, and the advancement of good citizenship and community development has raised more than $91 million. That is US dollars, 631,644 US dollars in donations from unexplained sources between its, 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 its inception in 2018 and 2023. It's also spent about $84 million you, um, that's Jamaican dollars, that's 581,416 US dollars over that same time period with little indication as to how that money was spent, right? That is how these people are running the show. Now listen to what she is intimating here. In 2018, the doctor, that, the, that the year Dr. Clark was first elected to parliament in a special election, the foundation took in roughly 28 million, that's 192,196 um, US dollars, which sank to just above 8 million. In 2020, the year of the general election, donations shot up again, surpassing 35 million. So you see how it's rising, even when the people were under tremendous pressure during the pandemic, right? They were facing tremendous, significant economic problems and challenges, yet still these people were having fun, right? They plunged again in 2021 to 1.6 million and around 3 million in 2022. 
Then they rose again in 2023 to just over 15 million Jamaican dollars. Right? And look at what he's saying here. The foundation spending tracked a similar pattern. Some 15.5 million in special election year in 19 in 2018, then down to just under 10.3 million the following year. In general election year, 2020 expenses skyrocketed, this time to about $30.5 million. Then they plummeted again to around $5.8 million in 2021 and $9.7 million. Uh, that's 67,000, over 67,000 US dollars in 2022 before rising again in 2023, just about $12 million. So what is happening in 2023? Right? What was so great about 2023 for... Dr. Nigel Clark's foundation and his charity organization. I don't know, right? He has to tell you. But the thing about it, now look at what she says when she contacted Nigel Clark about what the position about this sort of mysterious occurrence. When asked about the donors and how the money was spent, Dr. Clark responded via WhatsApp. You only have aggregate donation over the six-year period 2018 to 2023 because this information has been made available to the company's office as required. He added, with respect to providing you with further information, the organization is under no obligation to you to go further than the applicable laws require. Right? That is the arrogance of Dr. Nigel Clark, because you have made him into a king, right? You have made him into a king. And if we can actually, you know, um, eradicate, minimize, reduce, as it were, some of the levels of corruption we're seeing coming out of Jamaica, and corruption and criminality, the two C words are connected. They are connected and if we can wipe out some of these corrupt actions enacted by our politicians, displayed by them, often displayed and shamelessly displayed by them, because they realize that journalism is dead in Jamaica and there is no watchdog institution to sort of, you know, be the guardrail for criminal activities like these, because this is an act, this is, these are criminal activities, right? These alleged, you know, um, enterprises here and the activities surrounding them are criminal in every sense of the word. It, it, it's not, we, we can't even say that it is acting here. And Dr. Clark is suggesting that, you know, they, they have, they're not obligated to reporting anything or to divulging anything to the Jamaican people because, you know, according to the law. Now, who makes the laws but, you know, Dr. Nigel Clark and his minions? They're the ones making the laws, right? And they're the ones who can dodge the laws as, you know, they decide to do. Now, I will leave the article um, um, in the description box and you can read it for yourselves. But the fact of the matter is that there's just too much corruption in Jamaica. And if we try to root out some of that corruption, I think that we'll have sufficient money to run the country. And let me end the video by saying another thing that Dr. Clark, can, not, not, that, that um, what's his name, that Damon Crawford can do if his administration comes into power, which I don't think they're going to aim to, to do, is to stop this, you know, lowering of the debt the GDP, the, 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 the GDP ratio to debt or debt to GDP ratio, right? We need to stop that, you know, going down to 50. And it's now, I think, in the 60s, we can't afford to put the, the lower or, you know, debt to GDP ratio to 50% of GDP. We can't, we can't do that. It's not possible, right? Well, it's possible, but at what expense? Right at our expense, that the people will be suffering, and the government will not have the wiggle room to be able to do what it needs to do to invest in education and healthcare, and also to develop the infrastructure on the island. Right, so these are the things that we need to do. So his government needs to be able, if they come into power, to stand up to the island, 
and let them know that we cannot continue to lower our GDP at the rate at which they have asked us to do, because no other country, to my understanding, to my knowledge, is doing that and is at 50% and in that way moved from 125% of GDP in 2013 to now approaching 60 something percent of GDP. I mean, at what cost? We've got to expand the economy. We've got to develop the economy and we're not doing that. So don't tell me about, you know, increasing GCT, G, what do you call it, GCT on people's, you know, consumption, because that is another form of austerity. And maybe that is coming out of the playbook of the IMF, right? Because they like to tell us how to run the show and we need to take funds out of the NHT. Can we ask the NHT, the IMF, to give back the money that it built out of the NHT funds to fund education? Or what, you know, one of the things too, if you can, my problem with the whole bilking of the funds, of the funds of the IMF, why didn't the IMF say that we will work with you and why not use some of the money from the NHT to put into your healthcare and into your education? Because that would have sat well with me if the government had done that. If the government had taken money out of NHT to build new schools to also to remodel the schools that we have there, the physical plants that we have there, because they are really, really ancient and they don't look up. Our schools, for the most part, look like, you know, the decade of the 1950s and the 1960s, right? We have not even, we're not even in the decade of the 1990s, right? We, we're looking very bad. They're in bad shape for the most part. So if we had taken funds when the IMF built out of, out of billions of dollars out of that National Housing Trust Fund, I would not be complaining because at least we can say that the, even though the funds were not designed for education, but we see that it is being used in education. Another thing, why not transfer that whole fund into education fund? I think it's now time to do that because many of our people are not going to get any housing through that arrangement, right? Through the NHT arrangement, I think it's more benefiting right now. The wealthy are not benefiting the poor for whom it was designed so I think what we need to do now, we have to re-engineer and we have to refocus our attention on educating our people and also investing in healthcare and other infrastructure like roads that are in horrible, deplorable conditions right now in Jamaica, right? So that's what my suggestion is for Damon Crawford's plans to, to increase GCT, I say, no way, right? No way under the heavens should you be doing that and imposing another austerity on the Jamaican people. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like and share and you'll subscribe. See you in another video.